For other meanings, see lattice model in finance. A lattice model is a technique applied to the valuation of derivatives, where a discrete time model is required. For equity options, a typical example would be pricing an American option, where a decision as to option exercise is required at all times before and including maturity. A continuous model, on the other hand, such as black skulls, would only allow for the valuation of European options, where exercise is on the option's maturity date. For interest rate derivatives lattices are additionally useful in that they address many of the issues encountered with continuous models, such as pull to par. The method is also used for valuing certain exotic options, where because of path dependence in the payoff, Monte Carlo methods fail to account for optimal decisions to terminate the derivative by early exercise, equity and commodity derivatives. In general the approach is to divide time between now and the option's expiration into n discrete periods, at the specific time n. The model has a finite number of outcomes at time n plus 1 such that every possible change in the state of the world between n and n plus 1 is captured in a branch. This process is iterated until every possible path between n equals 0 and n equals n is mapped. Probabilities are then estimated for every n to n plus 1 path. The outcomes and probabilities flow backwards through the tree until a fair value of the option today is calculated. For equity and commodities the application is as follows. The first step is to trace the evolution of the option's key underlying variable, starting with today's spot price such that this process is consistent with its volatility. Log normal Brownian motion with constant volatility is usually assumed. The next step is to value the option recursively, stepping backwards from the final time step, and applying risk-neutral valuation at each node, where option value is the probability weighted present value of the up and down nodes in the later time step. See binomial options pricing model hashtag method for more detail, as well as rational pricing hashtag risk neutral valuation for logic and formulae derivation. As above, the lattice approach is particularly useful in valuing American options, where the choice whether to exercise the option early or to hold the option, may be modeled at each discrete time price combination. This is true also for Bermudan options. For similar reasons, real options and employee stock options are often modeled using a lattice framework, though with modified assumptions. In each of these cases, a third step is to determine whether the option is to be exercised or held, and to then apply this value at the node in question. Some exotic options, such as barrier options, are also easily modeled here. Note though that for other path-dependent options, Simulation would be preferred. The simplest lattice model is the binomial options pricing model. The standard method is that proposed by Cox, Ross and Rubinstein in 1979. See diagram for formulae. Over 20 other methods have been developed, with each derived under a variety of assumptions as regards the development of the underlying price. In the limit, as the number of time steps increases, these converge to the log normal distribution, and hence produce the same option price as black skulls. To achieve this, these will variously seek to agree with the underlying central moments, raw moments and, or log moments at each time step, as measured discreetly. Further enhancements are designed to achieve stability relative to black skulls as the number of time steps changes. More recent models, in fact, are designed around direct convergence to black skulls. A variant on the binomial is the trinomial tree, developed by Fell and Boyle in 1986, where valuation is based on the value of the option at the up, down and middle nodes in the later time step. The chief conceptual difference here, being that the price may also stay flat over the time step. As for the binomial, a similar range of methods exist. Note that the trinomial model is considered to produce more accurate results than the binomial model when fewer time steps are modeled, and is therefore used when computational speed or resources may be an issue. 
For vanilla options, as the number of steps increases, the results rapidly converge, and the binomial model is then preferred due to its simpler implementation. For exotic options the trinomial model is sometimes more stable and accurate, regardless of step size. When it is important to incorporate the volatility smile, or surface, implied trees can be constructed. Here, the tree is sold such that it successfully reproduces selected market prices across various strikes and expirations. See local volatility. These trees thus ensure that all European standard options will have theoretical values which match their market prices. Using the calibrated lattice one can then price options with strike maturity combinations not quoted in the market such that these prices are consistent with observed volatility patterns. There exist both implied binomial trees, often Rubenstein IBTs, and implied trinomial trees, often Derm and Carney Chris. The former is easier built, but is consistent with one maturity only, the latter will be consistent with, but at the same time requires, known prices at all time steps. As regards the construction, for an RIBT the first step is to recover the implied ending risk neutral probabilities of spot prices, then by the assumption that all paths which lead to the same ending node have the same risk neutral probability. A path probability is attached to each ending node. Thereafter, it's as simple as 1, 2, 3, and a three-step backwards recursion allows for the node probabilities to be recovered for each time step. Option valuation then proceeds as standard. For DKC, the first step is to recover the state prices corresponding to each node in the tree, such that these are consistent with observed option prices. Thereafter, the up, down, and middle probabilities are found for each node such that these sum to 1 spot prices adjacent time stepwise evolve risk neutrally, incorporating dividend yield state prices similarly grow at the risk-free rate. As for RIBT's option valuation is then by standard backward recursion. As an alternative, Edgeworth binomial trees allow for an analyst-specified skew and ketosis in spot price returns, see Edgeworth series. This approach is useful when the underlying's behavior departs from normality. A related use is to calibrate the tree to the volatility smile by a judicious choice of parameter values priced here. Options with differing strikes will return differing implied volatilities. For pricing American options, an edge with generated ending distribution may be combined with an RIBT. Note that this approach is limited as to the set of skewness and ketosis pairs for which valid distributions are available. One recent proposal, Johnson binomial trees, is to use N. L. Johnson's system of distributions, as this is capable of accommodating all possible pairs, see Johnson Su distribution. For multiple underlayers, multinomial lattices can be built, although the number of nodes increases exponentially with the number of underlayers. As an alternative, basket options, for example, can be priced using an approximating distribution via an Edgeworth tree. Interest rate derivatives. Lattices are commonly used in valuing bond options, swaptions, and other interest rate derivatives. In these cases, the valuation is largely as above, but requires an additional zeroth step of constructing an interest rate tree, on which the value of the underlying is then based. Note that the next step also differs. The underlying here is valued via backward induction, i.e. flows backwards from maturity, incorporating scheduled cash flows at each node, as opposed to forwards from valuation date as above. The final step, option valuation, then proceeds as standard. See aside, the initial lattice is built by discretizing either a short-rate model, such as Hull White or Black Derman Toy, or a forward-rate-based model such as the LIBOR market model or HJM. As for equity, trinomial trees may also be employed for these models. This is usually the case for hull-white trees. 
Under H.J.M., the condition of no arbitrage implies that there exists a martingale probability measure, as well as a corresponding restriction on the drift coefficients of the forward rates. These, in turn, are functions of the volatility of the forward rates. A simple, discretized expression for the drift then allows for forward rates to be expressed in a binomial lattice. Note that for these forward rate-based models, dependent on volatility assumptions, the lattice might not recombine. This means that an up move followed by a down move will not give the same result as a down move followed by an up move. In this case, the lattice is sometimes referred to as a bush, and the number of nodes grows exponentially as a function of number of time steps. A recombining binomial tree methodology is also available for the LIBOR market model. As regards the short-rate models, these are, in turn, further categorized. These will be either equilibrium-based or arbitrage-free. This distinction means that for equilibrium-based models the yield curve is an output from the model, while for arbitrage-free models the yield curve is an input to the model. In the former case, the approach is to calibrate the model parameters, such that bond prices produced by the model in its continuous form best fit observed market prices. The tree is then built as a function of these parameters. In the latter case, the calibration is directly on the lattice. The fit is to both the current term structure of interest rates and the corresponding volatility structure. Here, calibration means that the interest rate tree reproduces the prices of the zero-coupon bonds and any other interest rate-sensitive securities. Used in constructing the yield curve, note the parallel to implied trees above, and compare bootstrapping. For models assuming a normal distribution, calibration may be performed analytically, while for log normal models the calibration is via a root finding algorithm. See box description under Black Derman toy model. The volatility structure, i.e., vertical node spacing, here reflects the volatility of rates during the quarter or other period corresponding to the lattice time step. Given this functional link to volatility, note the resultant difference in the construction relative to implied trees above. Here, the volatility is known for each time step, and the node values must be solved for specified risk-neutral probabilities for implied trees. On the other hand, a single volatility cannot be specified per time step, i.e., we have a smile, and the tree is built by solving for the probabilities corresponding to specified values of the underlying at each node. Once calibrated, the interest rate lattice is then used in the valuation of various of the fixed income instruments and derivatives. The approach for bond options is described aside. Note that this approach addresses the problem of pull to par experienced under closed form. Approaches, see Black Skulls model hashtag valuing bond options. For swaptions the logic is almost identical, substituting swaps for bonds in step 1, and swaptions for bond options in step 2. For caps step 1 and 2 are combined. At each node the value is based on the relevant nodes at the later step, plus, for any caplet maturing in the time step, the difference between its reference rate and the short rate at the node. For callable and putable bonds a third step would be required. At each node in the time step incorporate the effect of the embedded option on the bond price and or the option price there before, stepping backwards one time step. For other, more exotic interest rate derivatives, similar adjustments are made to steps 1 and onward. An alternative approach to modeling bond options, particularly those struck on yield to maturity, employs modified equity lattice methods. Here the analyst builds a CRR tree of white EM, applying a constant volatility assumption, and then calculates the bond price as a function of this yield at each node, prices here thus pulling to par. The second step is to then incorporate any term structure of volatility by building a corresponding DKC tree and then using this for option valuation. Hybrid Securities Hybrid securities, incorporating both equity and bond-like features are also valued using trees. 
for convertible bonds the approach of Severiates and Fernandez is to divide the value of the bond at each node into an equity component arising from situations where the CB will be converted, and a debt component arising from situations where CB is redeemed. Correspondingly, twin trees are constructed where discounting is at the risk-free and credit risk-adjusted rate respectively, with the sum being the value of the CB. An alternate approach, originally published by Goldman Sachs, does not decouple the components, rather, Discounting is at a conversion probability weighted risk-free and risky interest rate within a single tree. See convertible bond hashtag valuation contingent convertible bond. More generally, equity can be viewed as a call option on the firm, where the value of the firm is less than the value of the outstanding debt shareholders would choose not to repay the firm's debt. They would choose to repay and not to liquidate. Otherwise, Lattice models have been developed for equity analysis here, particularly as relates to distressed firms. Relatedly, as regards corporate debt pricing, the relationship between equity holders' limited liability and potential Chapter 11 proceedings has also been modeled via Lattice.